Hey guys, this is Alex with Engineering Applied. Welcome to the part creation module. And in this first part of the part creation module, we're gonna be discussing creating sketch geometry. This is super exciting because this is our first steps in creating a strong framework for our 3D models. Make sure you check the timestamps in the description to find the specific features that you're looking for. And if this video doesn't contain those, make sure you check out the other videos within the series. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Also, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below to let me know if these have been helpful in your Autodesk Inventor journey. I'm genuinely interested in finding out and hearing your feedback. Well, without any further delay, let's go ahead and start the video. Okay, so getting started here, we have our part design window already open. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a 2D sketch. And to do that, we go to this top left corner and we click this icon here that says 2D sketch. If we don't see 2D here and we see 3D instead, we're just gonna click this drop down and go to start 2D sketch. Now you'll notice we get a series of planes that pop up and it's really important for us to be cognizant of which planes we decide to use to start sketching our part. So I'll give you an example here. So in this particular case, I gave an example of wanting to design a square plate with four holes on it. This is going to act as an adapter plate. So let's say in our hypothetical scenario, this is to mount a vision system camera to our manufacturing assembly line. So to do this, what we're going to go ahead and do is click on this XZ plane, and I'll tell you why. Because when I look at the plan view or the top down view on the plate itself, I want that to relate to the top of the model. So to do that, I come over to the view cube, and when I click top, I see that my top down view in this case is the XZ plane. And that is where I'm going to draw the basic geometry of this plate in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and click on XZ plane. And now it's opened up our sketch environment. So you see under our create section, which is the main section we're going to be discussing in this video in particular, uh, all these other features I'll cover in separate videos just to condense the amount of time investment that you're uh, putting into watching this tutorial. So Starting with create, I'm going to go through some of the basic tools available and we'll most likely use most of these or some of them at least to create the first framework to this part. So the first tool we're going to talk about here is the line tool. It's very simple to use. So when we click the line tool, you'll see a little yellow dot. This is the first endpoint that the cursor will drop based on where your mouse is pointed. So if we just left click, it drops the one leg of the line and we can extend it uh, to whatever length we want. We can actually dimension it here. So we could actually type in 0.5 and hit enter and it finishes the leg of that line and it continues it from the end point. And so we could you know, click and drop all day long. And let's say this is the starting shape we wanted to start out with. We could actually come back and bring the end point here until it turns green. And that basically tells us, hey, the end point of the line that you're currently drawing is coincident with the end point of this other line segment. So that's what we want. So we'll go ahead and click that there. And there we go. It closes the shape for us. Now, uh, we're just going to right click and click OK to get out of the line tool. You can also just hit escape to get out of the line tool. So if I jump in or any tool for that matter, if I jump back into that tool and then hit escape, you'll see it deactivates it as well. So I generally keep my left hand in that general area of the keyboard most of the time. So I'll just use escape pretty often. Uh, if we go to the drop down here, we have some other options. We have our spline. So we can create a spline. You know, so you could fit a curve to some eccentric geometry. We have um, our interpolation spline. So this is basically going to try to interpolate through the endpoints themselves, whereas the other one, we were controlling the vertex of the spline. We have our equation curve, so we can set our x of t and our y of t parameters based on our variable t. We have our bridge curve, which essentially what this does is it'll bridge two separate curves. So let's try that real quick, and we'll just create two separate splines here. So we'll just use the vertex controlled one and we'll hit 
create. And then we're gonna go back down to this one just for the sake of using a different one. And we'll have it fit through these points. Okay, oops. Let's go back and redraw that real quick. Gonna hit create. Okay, so now we can go to bridge curve and we'll click this curve and we'll click this curve and it bridges that gap, super cool. All right, so that's complete there. Okay, so the next tool is the circle tool. So with the circle tool, and in this case, we're starting out with the center point circle. And if you don't see that, you could go to the little drop down underneath and you'll see the different types of circle tools that are available. So we'll start with the center point. All you do is you move the yellow dot that's on top of your cursor over to the point that you want to center the circle to left click. And now you can click or you can uh, drag the mouse out to ex uh, expand the diameter of the circle, or we could bring it back in to contract it. So in this case, I actually want to go ahead and dimension the circle to 0.5 inches. So that's what I'm going to do. And you'll see we have our diameter dimension assigned there. So we're going to jump out of the circle tool and I'll show you how to dimension this really quickly uh, another way. So we're going to erase that, drop another circle, but we're not going to type in a dimension. So we have our circle dropped. You can either come up to dimension and click on that, or you can right click and in your marking menu, go to general dimension. So this is what I typically do. Uh, once you start working quickly and you memorize the, you have that muscle memory of the marking menu options, this helps you move a lot quicker through your design process. So we've got that there. We're gonna just left click and dimension it to 0.5 and press enter. And then there you go, you have a dimension. Now, one thing I'll point out is that the circle is still blue. What does this mean? Well, what this means is, is that the sketch geometry is not fully defined. So when I grab the center point of this part and click and drag, I can move it around. That means the geometry is not fully defined and it can move by accident uh, if I jump back into the sketch and click and drag something by accident. So to alleviate that, we're gonna actually put some constraints here. So I'm gonna open up the origin drop down here and we have our center point there. I'm gonna control click here and press coincident. Now you'll notice that the profile turns black. That means the sketch is fully defined. And you'll see here uh, in the bottom right hand corner, it says fully constrained. So that's what we're always looking for in our sketches. So that is the center point circle. Moving back up to the top here, we have our tangent circle. So let's create three lines real quick. And just sort of arrange them in such a way that we can create a tangent circle. And let's do this drop down, go to circle. We're going to click the lines that we're tangent to. And there we go. So we've created a circle that's tangent to all three of those lines. Uh, really handy tool if you're creating a circle within maybe some com complex geometry or if there's for whatever reason, uh, an arc that you're trying to create that's tangent to some line. So this is a really handy uh, tool in your toolbox. So we're gonna jump out of this tool. The next tool is the ellipse tool. So we go to the drop down where the circles were and we go down to ellipse. And when we do that, we're gonna pick a center point for the ellipse. So we'll just select the origin and we click once and now we are dragging the major axis in its position. So say I want the major axis to be parallel with the Z axis and essentially horizontal here. Then we left click again. And then now we drag up to create the minor axis. And then you can go back and assign points or lines and dimensions to uh, complete and fully define this ellipse. Next, we have our arc tool. So this is really handy for uh, so this is actually a three point arc. And so it, it does exactly what it says. We're gonna click three points and it'll generate an arc through those three points. So let's say we want a point here, maybe a point here, and then our final point, and let's actually have this loop around right here. And then we can dimension that accordingly and uh, edit that as needed. Next is our tangent arc. So we'll go into the drop down here and click 
tangent arc. But actually first, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to draw four sides to a rectangle, but leave one of the corners open. So first we're going to our line tool and I'm just gonna start drawing some lines real quick. So we'll bring it out a little bit further and then bring it up here. And then we'll hit escape to get out of the line tool and we're gonna go back into our dropdown, make sure we're clicking tangent. We're going to click the line segment itself and then we're gonna click this other line segment and you'll notice that it created a tangent constraint to the first line. We can actually create a tangent constraint to the other line by clicking the tangent constraint, clicking this line, and then clicking that one. And it resizes the line for us there. Next, we have our center point arc. So say if I want my arc centered to, let's say this area here, I can click that area, drag out, to the radius of the arc. So we'll just drag it vertically here. And now we can actually draw the arc itself. So say we wanna come out to 141.42 degrees. There you go. Now you have your arc drawn with respect to its center point. The rectangle tool, we start out with the two point rectangle. So look, we have a bunch of different options here. So I'll go brief, briefly through all of these. So the first option is a two point rectangle. So essentially you start with one corner and you end with the other corner and then you can go back and dimension those as needed. The nice thing about the rectangle tool over drawing a rectangle with the line tool is that it automatically constrains the opposite lines or legs of the rectangle for you. So you'll see that these, uh, this one is parallel to this one and uh, this one's parallel to this one. So really handy tool, I use it all the time. The next type of rectangle is a three point rectangle. So we select our three points and that's what generates the rectangle for us. So we've got our three points and there you go. We've got the two point center. So this one's pretty handy, especially if you're trying to, let's say, snap the center of the rectangle to the origin. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we've got our origin and now we draw it out. And you'll notice it has the dashed lines going from vertex to vertex in the corners. And that just represents that this is a center point uh, rectangle with the necessary constraints. Okay, the next one is the three point center. So you start with the center. Let's try it with the origin again. We create our second point. Let's say it's uh, horizontal and then we drag it vertically. So it's sort of similar to the ellipse tool in that manner. We have our slot center to center. So let's say for example, I'm creating a slotted plate to allow some flexibility once it's attached. I'll go ahead and start with a two point center rectangle as our, you know, sort of our profile for our shape. And let's say we want to create a slot sort of in the center somewhere. So we'll click our center to center and go here to here, and then we can pull it up to grow that slot. So you'll see slotted parts pretty often in adapter plates or anything like that to allow extra flexibility after it's already mounted. Maybe you have to make an adjustment to a sensor that's mounted to a conveyor belt. So uh, these are used all the time. I've used them, designed tons of these and uh, fabricated a bunch of these. So it's just an a, example that you would uh, use in the real world, if you're so inclined. Um, there's also the overall slot. So this grabs the ends of the slot. So this actually might be a more practical approach when you're keeping in mind the reality or the realistic way that you're going to measure this feature. So if you were going to measure a slot, you'd be measuring it from end to end rather than center point to center point because whoever your quality inspector is, they're not going to want to use a gauge pen to measure up to the side of a gauge pen and then do the arithmetic to figure out where the center of that gauge pen is. This is a much quicker way and I personally prefer to um, incorporate this particular slot in my designs over the center to center but it's personal preference and it's highly dependent on your particular case. So in this case, we're gonna go horizontal here from the ends, and then we're gonna just drag it up to create that slot feature. And you'll see we've got our end points there right in the middle of the arcs there. 
Next, we have our uh, center point. So what this is doing is we go from the center of the slot feature itself. So if you have your ends of your slot, you're going from the center point to one end. So we'll create the center point with the origin. We'll go to one end and you'll notice it's, it's sort of hard to see, but on the screen, it extends out another portion of the line equally. And then we create our profile there. Next, we've got our three point arc. So now we're combining a slot feature with an arc feature. Um, so imagine, let's say, a mount for your camera tripod where you want to be able to move the platform vertically uh, as such. And you want your slotted plate that's on the side that's mounting your camera up to be able to move in this direction. So this would be a, a, a use for the three point arc. So we'll just click three points. And then we can expand it out. To do this manually, um, it would take a, you know, a little bit longer depending on your proficiency, but this is a way quicker way to do things here. If you know the width of the arc you need, you know the endpoints and the, the middle point of your arc, this is a way superior method. Okay, we have our center point arc. So let's say we want to center it to the origin. We'll pick one end of the arc here pull it over to this end, and then expand the arc. Polygon. So when you click your polygon tool, um, it'll start out with a certain number of sides. So let's say I wanted to start making a honeycomb uh, reinforcement pattern for a particular part. So what I can do is I can set the number of sides to six. And I can come down here and let's say we'll just start at the origin because that's where I want the center to start. And we'll expand it to whatever size we need it to be. And then we'll drop it. And then we could go back and dimension things as necessary to create this shape. Also, we have this other option here. This essentially uh, puts a point on the midpoint of the leg rather than the corner of the leg as you see here. So when we drop this, you'll see that we were manipulating the shape based off of the midpoint rather than the vertex here. Okay, so that concludes uh, the rectangle and uh, associated features within the rectangle dropdown. The next is the fillet tool. So you can actually add fillets or uh, a radius to the corners of your part within the sketch. There's some advantages to doing this. It really depends on the design intent that you have with this particular design. I prefer to add fillets after the part is extruded when there's actual 3D geometry there because that's, for me and my workflow, I like the flexibility of going back and changing the fillet and not having to jump back into the sketch itself to change that feature. So what we can do here is we're gonna draw a center point rectangle. And let's say I wanna round these corners. So if I'm making a, a square plate or a rectangular plate and I wanna add a radius here so that the users of this plate don't get injured on a sharp corner, what I can do is I can jump out of this tool, go to fillet, and we have a drop down here. We're gonna start with fillet and I'll show you the chamfer as well. So starting with fillet, we can either click on, um, sometimes it'll allow you to click on a corner and I believe that could potentially just be the fillet option for the 3D geometry itself. So in this case, we're gonna click one leg and then the other leg and you'll notice a little arc pops up in between and then we could create the fillet there. So it defaulted to 0.125 or um, one eighth of an inch. What we can do is we can also Let's add a fillet to another corner, but let's change the dimension. Let's change it to like 250, 0 0.250. You'll notice I'll say 250 or 500 or something like that. Um, that's just me saying uh, 250 thousandths of an inch or 500 thousandths of an inch, which is half an inch. So we click the other leg and there you go. It creates a radius or a fillet of 0.250. Let's go try out the chamfer tool. So we'll exit out of that, go to the drop down and click chamfer. Um, so imagine you've 
you want to manufacture a square plate and in your post-processing, you want to grind down the corner at a 45 degree to a certain length. You could add that chamfer feature in the sketch itself. And to do that, we've set our distance. So let's leave it at 0.125. And then we just click our two legs and there you go. It sets the dimensions. And so in this case, it sets it based on a horizontal length and a vertical length. You can also do a length and an angle. So there's various ways that you can dimension a chamfer or have it verified by, um, you know, your measuring tools or your quality assurance crew or whoever that you're working with. So we're going to jump out of that. And the next tool is the text tool. So the text is very useful if you mark parts or if you want to add some text to your model. So let's say we have a 3D part already modeled up and I want to add some text to that part to later go in and create a cut into the part to act as a um, an etching into the part to identify it. So what I can do is I can click text. I'll click a spot where I want to drop it. And let's say I'm just going to click uh, or uh, type in engineering and hit OK. And also, you'll notice here we can set all sort of, sorts of options in here. We could, um, you know, set our font. We could set our, um, or sorry, our fonts here. We could set our standard for our text, our font size, our spacing, all sorts of other things in here. We're going to click OK. And it throws down our text. And this is really nice for a visual touch within your model if you need to use that. Next is our geometry text. So this is kind of neat because you can wrap the text around certain geometrical features. So let's say, for example, we have our circle. So say we have a circle feature and then do geometry text. And let's say the offset distance, I wanted a distance of a uh, hundred thousandths of an inch away. And then I could just type test. Hit OK. And you'll notice it actually wraps it around the curvature of the circular hole, which this is really cool. And um, again, it's just a really handy feature for adding text into your model. OK, and the second to last option we're going to take a look at here in this session is the point tool. The point it essentially does exactly what it says. So it just drops a point for you. You can use this as reference geometry. So maybe uh, I want to put some center points for some circles, let's say. So uh, let's draw a rectangle and I want to cut a couple holes in the plate. Now, usually you would just use a circle and be done with it, but let's just say we needed some reference geometry here. So I'll just drop the point here and maybe we want to dimension that. So um, <clears throat> just for uh, brevity, we will go ahead and just fix everything. And we're going to create some dimensions for this point. So we're going to say, oh, we want it, sure, 1.3 inches away from that side. And we want it, let's say, 0.5 inches away from that side. You can dimension that point and then come back and add features onto it. It could be circle features, so we can hover over that and it'll snap to the center of that point. And we could add all sorts of stuff using that tool. It's really handy. Now, the last tool, and this is something you'll use quite often, especially if you're continuously building on previous geometry within your model, and that's the project geometry tool. So what project geometry does is, and I'll give you a quick example here, so I'm going to just extrude a rectangle. And we're just going to extrude that to 0.250. Okay. And then we're going to create another sketch on this plane by clicking the plane or the top of the face of the part. And we're going to go to start 2D sketch. Now, I want to use the geometry of the pre-existing part. So what I can do is I can click project geometry 
let's say I want to project all four sides to use this reference geometry to dimension a hole in the center of the plate. So I can just click all four of these sides. You can also click the face, but I, I always like to click the specific edges that I'm looking for because sometimes if you click the face, it, it captures some geometry that you're actually not looking for. So we're gonna click all that and you'll notice these yellow lines. That means it's successfully projected the geometry that you're looking for. So we're gonna just click okay to jump out of that tool. And now we could drop a circle and actually I'm not gonna center it because I wanna show you, I can dimension it from the sides and use those as reference geometry. So what I can do is go to okay. We're gonna do some general dimensions. Sure, we'll leave it there and we'll dimension it from this wall and we'll leave it there. And now add our final dimension to the diameter of the circle and sure, we'll leave it at that. So you can see we can dimension subsequent sketches off of previous geometry. So we can finish that up there. Um, our other options are project cut edges. So say for example, we put a plane in the middle of this part. So I'll just go ahead and draw something up real quick for you. So we're gonna just finish that sketch and I'm gonna delete this extrusion real quick. We're gonna start here with a, we're gonna just extrude a cylinder real quick with a circle. Okay, we're gonna extrude that. Let's extrude it up to about an inch, that'll do. And then let's put a plane, and I don't expect you to remember this now, I'm just giving you an example. So we're gonna just create an offset from this plane, and we're gonna just drag this somewhere in the middle. And then we're gonna create a new sketch on this plane here. So we select the plane, new sketch, okay. So what I can do now is I can project the cut edges. So when I click that and then click the edge here, let me rotate this around for you. You'll see that it projects the edges that are cut by the intersecting plane. Okay. And then we have a uh, project 3D sketch. And so for this example, I went ahead and created a brief scenario to explain this a little bit more in detail for you. So I have a cylinder. And so this is a cylinder that I previously extruded. And I have another uh, working plane that's offset from that cylinder some set distance. And I drew an ellipse on it. So essentially what I wanna do here is I want to project this ellipse, but curve it around the face of the cylinder. So all you have to do is taking your 2D sketch while in that 2D sketch plane, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to your uh, projection menu and you're gonna go down to project 3D sketch and you're going to select the face that you wanna project onto. So we're gonna select the cylinder face and then there you go. So if we rotate this around, you'll see that we projected that ellipse onto the cylinder face. So this is a really great way to get some eccentric geometry or some really detailed features onto your part uh, with a curved surface. We're going to click OK, and there you go. Now you have your uh, elliptical geometry on a curved face. The final one is project DWG geometry. So um, I'm not going to show an example here, but essentially all this does is it takes some underlying uh, DWG file geometry that's existing, and it places it onto a part. So it's really handy if you're um, incorporating... Uh, some geometry from, let's say, an AutoCAD file. So this is a way that you would do that. That concludes this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Part Creation Tutorial Module, where we covered the basic sketch creation tools and commands. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content as it's released. And as always, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.